Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about benign ovarian tumors in contrast to the video where we talked about malignant ovarian tumors. We will also talk about ovarian cysts. The ovaries are around the size of an almond and their function is to produce an ovum once per month during the fertile age, as well as to produce estrogen and progesterone. In the first part of the video, we will talk about benign ovarian tumors. In the second part, we will talk about ovarian cysts. The ovaries are a paired organ, and they consist of epithelium, stroma and gonadal cells. This variety in cells gives the possibility for many different types of tumors to form. There are three main types of benign tumors. At first, there is the benign cystic teratoma, a type of mature teratoma, which is also called dermatocyst. This tumor is mainly formed by ectodermal tissue, so hair, teeth, muscle and bone tissue can all occur within this tumor. It also is the most often occurring ovarian germ cell tumor with a percentage of 10 to 20 percent of all benign ovarian tumors. These tumors are non-cancerous but they can grow several centimeters large in diameter and are likely to regrow after they have been removed. The symptoms usually are caused by the growing size of the teratoma. Statistically speaking, they usually grow around 2 mm per year, but can reach the total diameter of 10 to 15 cm. The symptoms include pelvic or abdominal pain by pressure on the ovaries and surrounding ligaments and nerves. To diagnose a teratoma, imaging techniques are necessary. Those include x-rays, CT scans, MRIs or ultrasound checkups. Once a teratoma is found, usually a biopsy is done to confirm its benign or malignant characteristics. The next type of benign ovarian tumor is a fibroma, a slow-growing tumor with an average diameter of less than 7 cm, so slightly smaller than the size a mature teratoma can reach. This type of tumor is generally slow growing and is often asymptomatic. However, in some cases it can cause something called Mike's syndrome, which is the clinical triad consisting of a benign solid ovarian tumor, pleural effusion and ascites. In other cases it can lead to pelvic pain, frequency, so more than usual times of urination in a day, metroregia, so bleeding in between normal menstruations, and also back pain. An ovarian fibroma consists of connective tissue. Remember, the ovaries are wrapped in a shell of connective tissue, so this type of tumor usually originates from the ovary surface. If symptoms occur, a surgical excision is usually recommended. The last type is the ovarian cyst adenoma. It can be serous or mucous in its characteristic. The benign form is usually mucous. As the other ones, also this ovarian tumor is usually asymptomatic. And in some patients it may cause pain due to pressure or it could cause menstrual disorders. Also here the diagnosis is done via imaging techniques and they are often an incidental finding. In case of symptoms or imaging tests indicating a benign ovarian tumor, a pregnancy test is usually done to exclude an ectopic pregnancy, as this might have a fatal outcome. If you want to know more about ectopic pregnancies, make sure to see our video on that as well. If in the imaging tests there seems to be a tumor with some radiologic signs of malignancy, there should always be a follow-up consultation with a specialist, followed by the excision and biopsy of the lesion.
signs of malignancy include heterogeneity, so if the tumor has cystic and solid parts, or if the tumor has an uneven surface, or also if there seems to be multiple lesions in one ovary. Sometimes it is unfortunately not possible for the surgeon to remove the tumor without damaging the ovaries. In case of multiple cysts in one ovary, sometimes a ophorectomy, so the removal of one ovary, has to be considered. In the next part we will talk about ovarian cysts. Those are fluid-filled benign lesions in the ovaries. Ovarian cysts have many different causes, that's why the classification is usually done according to the cells they originate from. The first type is the follicular cyst. They occur when an ovulation does not occur, even though the mature oocyte forms in the graphene follicle. This follicle progressively fills with fluid. This type occurs mainly in women with irregular menstruation, as in adolescence, just after the onset of menstruation, or in women in the time just before the onset of menopause. Follicular cysts often resolve spontaneously within two months. The next type is the corpus luteum cyst. It forms, as the name says, from the corpus luteum, which forms after the oocyte is released from the ovary. This type can exit during the normal um, this type can exist during the normal cycle but also during pregnancy. The fluid it is filled with is typically yellowish in color and they usually do not exceed the size of 7 to 8 cm. Corpus luteum cysts synthesize progesterone and lead to amenorrhea and the inhibition of further ovulations. If a corpus luteum cyst is detected during early pregnancy, it should not be removed, as a sudden change in progesterone levels could lead to a spontaneous termination of an early pregnancy. The next type is the granulosa tica lutein cyst. This cyst forms usually after the administration of ovulation-inducing medications that are used for in vitro fertilizations. This cyst can grow as large as 20 cm, but usually resolves after the hormone administration is stopped. The next type is called chocolate cyst. This type is due to endometriosis lesions in the ovary. If you want to know more about endometriosis, make sure to see our video in the gynecology playlist. As during the normal progression of the menstrual cycle bleeding occurs, also the endometriosis lesions bleed. And this blood collects in cysts where the lesions are found. The cysts are called chocolate cysts due to the appearance of the brownish blood inside the cyst cavity. The last type is the polycystic ovaries. They form due to a disturbance in the normal hormone regulation in which luteinizing hormone is formed too early in the menstrual cycle. In the wall of the cysts are found Tika cells, which secrete androgens. This leads to disturbances in the menstrual cycle and ovulation. Those cysts usually occur bilaterally and are high in number, though small in size. The triad of characteristics of polycystic ovarian syndrome is irregular menstruation, excess androgen levels, and the polycystic appearance of the ovaries. The syndrome is very common. It is estimated to affect around 1 out of 10 women. The exact cause is unknown, but there seems to be a familial predisposition. In general, ovarian cysts are often an incidental finding. Sometimes they are also found after a sonography examination was recommended for a patient with amenorrhea or hypermenorrhea, or other ovarian cyst-related symptoms such as back pain or pelvic pain. For the diagnosis of an ovarian cyst, the age of the patient has to be considered, as well as the characteristics of the patient's menstrual cycle, 
and it questions if there have been any hormones administered. The most used technique for the diagnosis of ovarian cysts is the abdominal sonography. Ovarian cysts usually show as fluid-filled cavities with an even surface. A possible complication of an ovarian cyst is the rupture of said cyst. The previously contained fluid accumulates in the abdominal cavity and can irritate the peritoneum due to friction, leading to acute severe pain. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.